It is definitely not a regional problem. It is a global problem. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a different approach. After you've created that much material, where does it go? And our oceans, our environment, landfills, incinerated up to the air, those aren't acceptable options. We are a manufacturer, we make materials, therefore it is incumbent upon us to be part of the solution. The world is expecting us to deliver. We've got to come up with a better answer. And it's going to take companies like Eastman that are willing to step out and make early investment and to show the world what's possible. And it's going to take people like Bruce Bruin. He's really the perfect combination of scientist and just a practical everyman. He was the plant manager for the original uh, polyester recycling plant that was in Rochester, New York, and is one of the key inventors on the redesign that we are getting ready to install here in Kingsport. The process was first developed at Eastman Kodak Company in the 70s. The original process was a methanolysis process, and it was to, to uh, break down plastic back into its raw materials to do molecular recycling so that we would have raw material to run the plant. What started out as x-ray films, uh, expanded into a lot of different types of plastic as the engineers made it more robust. Over the years in that process we chose to switch out equipment to use different processes to come up with different ways to get that higher purity uh, with lower energy cost and lower energy cost is better LCA. We spent 40 years learning to do it. Didn't start out easy. It took upwards of a decade to get pretty good at it honestly. That heritage has given us this opportunity today to build upon this quickly, to show the world what's possible, to give them the opportunity to choose what's right for the planet and choose it right now. We want to believe that that material that we're dropping in a recycle bin somewhere is absolutely getting converted into a new material somewhere and that it doesn't somehow find its way to a landfill or incinerated or even worse to a waterway. You know, the numbers are staggering. In a mechanical recycling process, essentially the materials are, are collected, they're separated by type, and there are different businesses that will purchase those and they will reclaim them. It's a fairly simple process, but to do that requires pretty high quality materials. Even the most recycled plastics, even with PET, not everything can get back into a circular economy. Most PET can't get from a bottle back to a bottle. Most of that is going to be downcycled into films and fibers and things that can't get back to that bottle. So it takes technology to do that. Rather than you know that take make waste linear economy that we've had before, the circular economy is served by being able to bring a technology to market that allows us to unlock those those value that's still in the material. A big part of what we're trying to do is today you think about plastic waste as waste. With a new ecosystem, with new processes, waste can be seen as something different. Waste can be seen as raw material with value. Once something has value, people are gonna treat it different. In molecular recycling, we take a material and we break it back down to its building blocks. We take the waste streams, we take, we take the streams that nobody else wants. We're targeting the hard to recycle waste. How can we make that new again? We're using a process with methanol and catalysts to break plastic down into just one step below plastic. You know, from polymer to monomer. The farther you have to go back down into a, a basic feedstock, the more energy is to go this way, and the more energy is to come back up. By going back just that one step, we can get a, a process that has, you know, a million to one, a billion to one uh, refinement of impurities and components in that system. One key advantage that molecular recycling brings to the table is the ability to repeat the process over and over. So you can essentially create a nearly infinite loop. This can happen again and again and again. This is not about one time and it's done. This is about as many times as you can bring it back, you can use it again. I think this technology proves that that is a future we can count on. It's not just an aspiration. It's not a pipe dream that's that's so far in the future. This isn't something that's you know five years out, ten years out. This is something we've known how to do before. We're doing it. The proof points are there. You know our customers like what they see. They are signing up to purchase materials that contain the recycle content. I'm very optimistic that we're going to be successful.
We've got, you know, a 40 plus year track record where this technology has already been proven. The kinks have been worked out and so it's available today and can be scaled up. We're constructing a plant that will have the ability to take 110,000 metric tons of plastic waste that would be destined for landfill and make it brand new again. This is one of the most exciting things that I have worked on in my 22 years at Eastman. We have teams um, in Europe, we have teams in the U.S all working together on how do we scale our processes faster. Everybody at the company has completely bought in to this is our future, you know, that we are going to make a difference globally as we continue to scale these processes. It is a global solution to a global problem, so we want every country to be recycling all their plastic back into plastic. We feel very confident that the asset we're putting in the ground today will use that technology, build upon that history, divert material from landfill, leave fossil feedstock in the ground, and do it in a lower carbon footprint than you can make virgin product out of. Doing things differently, it's not easy. I mean, it takes capital, it takes risk, it takes being willing to change the status quo and being willing to be the one that's doing something that nobody else is doing. We have this unique opportunity, almost a responsibility, to be a catalyst, to show the world what's possible. We've got pretty concrete principles to make sure that material is being recycled back to materials that are usable in similar applications as their original intention. Um, so a true circular economy. Today, a lot of recycling technologies are well suited for portions of the waste streams. Uh, but with our PRT and CRT technologies that are coming out, we could really help address other portions of the waste streams that before couldn't be recycled in a circular manner. But what's critical is to have a partner on the collection and sortation side that is also capable to sort out the waste plastic to the specific streams that are really well sought for our technologies. That's where InnerZero comes in. It's a great partner. They've got great sortation capabilities. They process over a million tons of plastic a year through their facilities. And this is a partnership that will really show the complementarity between the two approaches. As with many um, big problems, you cannot solve them alone. Uh, and uh, we have a plastic waste crisis and only the waste management industry cannot solve it. And only the chemical industry can, the chemical industry cannot become circular alone. But if we join forces, I think we can prove, uh, we can solve this problem. Uh, and um, that can only be a first step uh, because the, the problem is huge. And as I said before, you can only solve this uh, problem together with strong partners. We want to establish ourselves as a company that's doing everything. We want to do the sorting, we want to do the mechanical recycling, and we want to do the chemical recycling with our partners. And that's probably the biggest differentiation. We want to be a waste management company that's enabling molecular recycling. Where could we get all this waste? That, that was one of the big questions. And um, through that whole process, we, we looked into Europe, uh, in, into all the different countries, and InterZero really stood out as a party who was willing to to make this work. This collaboration is very important for us because we benefit from uh, InterZero uh, network. They have a great footprint in Germany and in Eastern Europe, and we know that there is a significant amount of waste available from that area. I mean, what we've been excited about with molecular recycling is that we're able to attribute value to waste, things that's otherwise going to incineration. And we're willing and able, thanks to this technology, to pay money for something that's currently being paid to be disposed of. And so a company like InterZero that exists in Germany, which has one of the most mature recycling infrastructure in the world, the fact that they have studied this, been involved in circularity, and how to maximize the amount of recycling that can actually take place, and they see value of this technology, we see it as a great validation of what we're doing for our planet.
welcome to the sixth edition of the Plastic Recycling Award Europe. I am Antonino Furfari, Managing Director of Plastic Recyclers Europe, and I'm delighted to be joined by Karen Leyer, Editor in Chief at Sustainable Plastics and Jury Chair of the Awards. Together, we reveal the finalists of the 2023 Plastic Recycling Awards Europe. We are happy to celebrate with you the innovations and achievements of the plastic recycling industry in Europe. This ceremony honors 47 finalists in seven award categories. All the finalist entries will be exhibited during the Plastic Recycling Show Europe on May 10th and 11th in Amsterdam. Before revealing the finalists, I would like to thank our sponsors, Erema and Femic for their invaluable support in making this event happen. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today. To select our finalists, we have put together a reverted jury panel. Mick Van Gaver, Chief Operating Officer at FOSPLUS. Flor Peña Eron, Senior Sustainability and Circular Economy Manager at Avery Denison. Kim Haggard, Professor at Maastricht University. The Plastic Recycling Ambassador of the past three years are also joined by Karen Layard, Editor-in-Chief at Sustainable Plastics. Rune Tohalsson, Owner and Director at Nordfolio Greentech. Ton Emmons, President of Plastic Recyclers Europe. Thank you again to all our judges. I will now give the floor to Karen Layard, who will introduce the awards categories. Thank you, Antonino, and a special thanks to our sponsors, Erema and Fimic. Welcome, everyone, to today's finalists' announcement. We are delighted to have received a record number of applications portraying innovation in a myriad of sectors. And it was certainly a tough job picking out the finalists amongst them. The finalists' applications and projects are all made in Europe, while the products contain a minimum of 50% recycled plastics. Our finalists will compete in one of the following categories. Automotive, electrical, or electronic product of the year. Building and Construction Product of the Year Household and Leisure Product of the Year Plastic Packaging Product of the Year Product Technology Innovation of the Year Recycling Machinery Innovation of the Year and Plastics Recycling Ambassador of the Year Now before handing it back to Antonino who will introduce the finalists in the first category, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to attend the awards ceremony which will take place during the Plastics Recycling Show Europe in May, where the winners will be announced. Antonino, the floor is yours. Thank you, Karen. Our first category is Automotive, Electrical or Electronic Product of the Year. This category covers interior or exterior plastic components incorporated in the design of automotive products, as well as electrical and electronic appliances. The finalists in this category are 700 Green Zone Maxi Space Fridge Freezer by Electrolux and Coolbreak. Nescafe Dolce Gusto Neo N1 by Nestlé, Free the Sea and Wick Group. Plastic Loop Seat Belt Buckle Cover by Leander Basel, Audi and Syncycle. 
Recycled Materials in Interior Trim Parts by Ford Automotive Sanai. Shoshu Tway by Next Design Innovation. Congratulations to our finalists in the Automotive Electrical or Electronic Product of the Year category. The second category is Building and Construction Product of the Year for interior and exterior construction products of all types. Our category finalists are CL Resi Double Venti by Penaltim. Eco2 Case, Benvik by Nextpool and CJ Plast. Recycled, nestable pallet by Aeon. Rigidrain by Polypipe. Congratulations to our finalists in the Building and Construction Product of the Year category. Let's proceed with the third category, which is Household and Leisure Product of the Year, covering all types of domestics and leisure goods. The finalists are Potato Planter by Jelenia Plast. Ganko Essential by Maple and Plastic Gas Casa. Organco Daily by Maple and Plastic Gas Casa. Gardena Ecoline by Uskvana Group. Hack Chelly by Flock. Playmobil Viltopia by Kurek Plastics. Congratulations to our finalists in the Household and Leisure Product of the Year category. Our fourth category is Plastic Packaging Product of the Year, covering products used for consumer plastic packaging. This category is sponsored by Arema. Here are our front runners. Always Pads by Procter & Gamble. Closed Loop Paint Containers by Barry Global. Collation Stretch, Rec 60 by High Pack. Container for Fertilizer by PreZero Polymers, Kunststoff Recycling and Compo. Corona 
20 Pocket Beer Crate by Schuller Alibert and Anheuser Busch in Bed. Career Envelope by Ella V. Rob Folia Opakovan Impost Duck Ecoline MTBC by SC Johnson Eludrill Pro by Vormioli Pharma and Pierre Fabre Magnum Optimum 1210 Circuline by Schiller Alibert. Congratulations to our finalists in the Plastic Packaging Product of the Year category. We now change our focus towards the Product Technology Innovation of the Year. This category is sponsored by FIMIC. This category covers technology innovation, which has brought significant improvement in the field of producing recyclable plastics products and incorporating recycled material in product manufacturing. The finalists are APC Color Adjust by Plasma Fair Extrusion Avian Color Prediction Service Chesa Knox A4R by Avian. Gas Top Flex by Amphacet. P React by NGR. Recosta Pet Art by Starlinger Recycling of Monomature Shoe by Arkema and On Running Data by Mitsubishi Chemical Group Congratulations to our finalists in the Product Technology Innovation of the Year. The sixth category is Recycling Machinery Innovation of the Year, increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of plastic recycling processes. The finalists are AMP Vortex by AMP Robotics. Inline white filter cleaning by BB Engineering.
two-stage process by Engel, Austria. Interema TVE Plus Duafil by Arema. Gray Parrot AI Waste Analytics Platform. Recycling of electroplated sanitary parts by Hans Grower and Impulse Tech. Plus Compact CS2000 by Plasmac. Wear protection for plastic shredders by Weimar Maschinenbau. Airlift Move by Westeria. Congratulations to our finalists in the Recycling Machinery Innovation of the Year category. Last but certainly not least, our final category is Plastic Recycling Ambassador of the Year, where we give special recognition to individuals who have made an outstanding contribution to European plastic recycling. Our finalists in this category are Project Manager of Tampinas, Vitor Branco CEO of Erema Group, Manfred Hacko Founder and CEO of Nextech, Professor Edward Kozier. Director of Bantam Materials, Rafi Shire. CEO and co-founder of Gravity Wave, Amaya Rodriguez Sola. Product and Circular Economy Manager at the Strata MCC, Nico van der Waal. Congratulations to the nominees for Plastic Recycling Ambassador of the Year, and once again to all our finalists. And thank you to our sponsors, judges, and our audience for joining us today. Congratulations. And don't miss the chance to see the products and projects on display at the Plastics Recycling Show Europe on May 10th and 11th in Amsterdam. On behalf of Plastics Recyclers Europe and Crane Communications, thank you and have a pleasant day. <laughs>